Lincoln Electric presents an overview of basic electricity and arc welding. We'll define the concepts of voltage and amperage, show you how they apply to the arc welding process, and explain the basic circuitry inside a standard arc welder. If you listen carefully, when you finish with this presentation, you will understand how electrical energy is used to perform work and the special way that electricity is transformed inside an arc welder to make it suitable for welding operations. The welding process, fusing two pieces of metal together by applying heat and pressure, was discovered sometime around the 14th century. However, it was not until 1885 that two scientists obtained a patent for welding with an electrical arc. Since then, the advances in welding technology have steadily continued, driven by new materials, new techniques, and new requirements. Electricity is one of the most versatile sources of energy we use to do work. Arc welding represents just one of these many, many types of work. To understand how electricity works in the welding process, we can compare electricity to water flowing from the nozzle of a garden hose. We know that water will squirt farther as water pressure increases. Electrical voltage is similar to water pressure. A high pressure water sprayer can remove paint. Higher voltages are needed to operate larger machines. Let's go back to our hose for a moment. If the pressure remains the same, a hose that has a larger diameter will have more water flowing through it. Fire hoses have large diameters to put water rapidly into a burning building. We use the term current flow for electricity, like we use flow rate for water. To do more work in a shorter period of time with electricity, we use a higher current flow. The current flow required to operate an electrical device such as an arc welder is called its amperage and is measured in ampers, or amps for short. We'll describe the importance of voltage or pressure and amperage flow rate to the arc welding process in just a moment. But we also need to look at a special property of certain types of electricity called waveform. We use electricity in two main forms to do work. The electricity supplied by batteries to operate everything from flashlights to camcorders is called direct current, or DC. Water flowing from a hose as a constant steady stream is like direct current. The electricity supplied to households and to factories and industry is called alternating current, or AC. Let's look at ocean waves breaking on a beach. The waves have peaks and valleys. The waves hit the beach at fairly constant intervals we call cycles. Alternating current has a waveform with peaks and valleys too. We can display the alternating current waveform on an electrical device called an oscilloscope. Alternating current has very regular looking waves with uniform peaks above and valleys below a baseline. Household current in the United States has 60 waves or cycles per second. Cycles per second are called Hertz, which is abbreviated as capital H, small z. 50 Hertz alternating current is used in most European countries. On the oscilloscope, smooth, regulated direct current looks like a simple flat line. It extends at a constant level above the baseline. So smooth DC has no waveform. Electricity can have other waveforms. We'll talk about these as we look at the welding process. Let's summarize what we've learned about electricity. Then we'll apply these concepts to electrical arc welding. Electrical power is measured using two main units. Voltage, which is like water pressure, and amperage, which is like water flow rate. Alternating current has a waveform which can be displayed on an oscilloscope. Smooth direct current has no waveform. All arc welders are basically devices that modify standard electrical power similar to what we use every day, into a form suitable for welding. Many electric arc welders use an alternating current AC industrial power source. But standard electrical power is not suitable for arc welding. Its voltage, or going back to our water analogy, its pressure is too high. But its amperage, or flow rate, is too low. Arc welding needs a larger diameter hose operating at relatively low pressure. Electricity flows smoothly into the welding process like water flowing steadily from a hose. We use an arc welder to create the kind of electricity we desire for welding. The welder decreases the voltage of the power source. 
At the same time, it increases the amperage. But in addition, for many common arc welding operations, we want very smooth electricity with no waves or ripples. For these tasks, we need direct current DC electricity. We can weld using alternating current too, but we'll focus on how DC arc welding technology works. Let's take a look at the three electrical transformations that occur inside a traditional arc welder. First, high voltage is reduced to low voltage both to meet the requirements of the welding process and for safety reasons. Simultaneously, the voltage reduction proportionally increases the current or amperage from the much lower current power source. The relationship between voltage and current is simple. If we have a power source of 10 amps at 100 volts, we can convert it to 20 amps at 50 volts, or 50 amps at 20 volts, or 100 amps at 10 volts, etc., given the right kind of electrical devices. Finally, AC power is converted to DC power. To accomplish these transformations, a standard electric arc welder contains three main electrical components. First, the step-down transformer reduces the relatively high input voltages that usually range between 230 and 575 volts down to about 50 to 80 open circuit volts, which means before welding starts. The alternating current can have a frequency of 50 or 60 hertz. The transformer does not affect the frequency. The supply alternating current and the output alternating current remain at 50 or 60 hertz but the current or amperage increases in direct proportion to the voltage reduction. Just what we want. The second component is a rectifier. It operates like a one-way valve or gate, permitting current to flow in only one direction. It does not alter the voltage or current, but merely changes the current from AC to a special kind of direct current called rippled DC. Notice how rippled DC differs from smooth DC on the oscilloscope. Now we have one step left to change the rippled DC into smooth DC for welding. We use a device called a choke. The choke acts like an electronic filter. It removes the ripples without affecting the voltage or amperage of our electricity. To conclude our presentation today, let's review briefly what you've seen and heard. The properties of electrical energy, voltage compares to water pressure, and amperage compares to water flow. Standard household and industrial alternating current electricity is not suitable for arc welding. Therefore, a transformer in an arc welder converts electricity at high voltage with low current to the desired characteristics of low voltage at high current flow. Finally, rectifiers convert alternating current to ripple direct current, and a filter smooths out the ripples to produce direct current for welding. In this presentation, you've learned how electrical energy is used to perform work and the special way that electricity is transformed inside an arc welder to make it suitable for welding operations. Now you can apply these general concepts to your continuing studies of arc welding technologies.